new band of rebels arose who were determined to carry the fight to Jerusalem. The Sicarii. To the Sicarii. Anyone who wasn't fighting the Romans was a collaborator and worthy of death. Many were slain every day, and the fear they were in was worse than the calamity itself. First and foremost, we want to say, call her lawyer, La Yahweh, uh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, and that's to give all praises to the Heavenly Father, the name is Only Begotten Son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, right, as we know as Yahweh Shah, right, his true name in the Paleo Hebrew. Right, you got your brother Yerumya here. It's your brother Sharat. Right, and we uh come to hit y'all with another lesson though, with uh the least of the commandments. And you know, we're just entitled in it, the least of the commandments, but all these commandments are vital to our people's life, right? Even ones that we can perceive to be uh minute, right? Um, and the one that we are fit to go in today, right? Um, is that it is a law that we have to teach our children, right? You know, we don't actually uh, bring it out a lot of times. So like it. We don't actually bring it out a lot of times, but it's actually a law that we give instructions to our kids, right? We give instructions. We tell them to clean their room. We tell them, you know, uh, probably to deal with these friends or not not to deal with these ones. Or I mean, we got them in these and this and that way. But the Lord said that we have to actually instruct them with these laws, statutes, and commandments, right? To build them from the ground up. All right, bro, can I get uh, Deuteronomy 4 and Salakia 6 and 5, right? Con, this is Deuteronomy one. chapter 6 and verse 5. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thine soul and with all thy might. Mm -hmm. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children right. and, and shalt thou shalt, so I can, thou shalt teach them diligently dilig, diligently unto our children right real, real quick brother look up that uh word diligently Let's see what that word is right it says that thou shalt love the lord thy god right and teach them Right, and have these law statutes commandments in our heart, meaning in our mind, and thou shalt teach them diligently to our children, right? Diligently to our little ones, right? Khan is coming up. Shonan. It says, outline of biblical usage is to sharpen wet. Mm -hmm to sharpen, to teach, to be pierced. The root to is to pierced. point intensively, to pierce, figuratively, to inculate. Con, uh, Con, Con, um, Salagia. Con, bro. It's, it's, the, it's a little delay on this thing. So um, let me finish it out. It's prick, sharpen, Teach diligently and to mm -hmm. wet. It's wet, right? Right. So we gotta diligently, right, sharply teach these two to our kids, right? Sharply. You know what I mean, like even sometimes, you know, it's not as exciting as you know, playing wrestling with them or yeah, you know I mean, going around and you know, shooting some hoops. It you know, it may not have that same thrill, you know, for them. You know to sit down and, and read the bible you know but that's just you know our job as the adult or the parent you know to instill into our kids right you know and the whole thing is is just like as and being a teacher you have to make it be relatable you know what i mean so you have to put them in you know in it you know and when they can see their self in it that they're not just reading uh a long uh distant story from far from far ago you know far long ago right it's a story that they can relate to it's a story that has them in it they can see their people in it right so that's just what we have to do we have to diligently sharply instill it into our children's mind right you can continue on the Deuteronomy God. 
it says Deuteronomy 6, slot 7. 7. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. Right. When you lie down, when you rise up, when you, I mean, when you stand, like, I mean, instead of, instead of going around telling them about Jack and the Beanstalk, right, Humpty Dumpty selling the wall, right, type of stories that, you know, folklore is that, that, that we, you know, or our parents were that uh, taught, you know, why not teach, you know, the Bible, the stories, right, you know, stories about David, right, fighting the giant, you know, him as a kid fighting the lion. Yeah, I mean, like that's a that's a that's a solid story. It's a real story, right? Yeah, I mean, a kid fighting a lion, having the power to fight a lion, like you know, that a that a you know, get get, get kids up. Yeah, you know I mean, because they can see themselves in that and within that story, right? Let me get uh, Deuteronomy eleven and uh, nineteen, and this is the thing too. You know I mean, that our uh, you know. Big mama, you know, her mama, like, it used to be sit down at the table, you know, have a big Bible, you know what I mean? And it just used to be time to read the Bible. Right now, you know, everybody get their plate, everybody go to their own room, you know, and everybody separate, you know? Why not Why not just be able to eat together, pray together, you know what I mean? And just, you know, eating only going to be 20 minutes. You know what I mean? You pray right there. I mean, it's just to build that, you know, that that bond, that family bond that we uh, have, right? Because Esau is trying to separate it, right? Already got most of our men out of the home, right? So we got to try to keep that bond of our family. And the only way is that if we use this glue, which is this Bible, right? We, uh, Deuteronomy 11 and 19. God, and if I, if I may add... Um... Yeah. If, if you're learning diligently, if you're diligent in this truth and serious about the most high and doing his will, then you should be addicted to this. You Absolutely. should just be you should be waking up yourself thinking about this as you're driving. You're think you yourself. You're thinking about this. So this is this when you come into this truth and and you and the most high, you know, really start cutting that old fat, that old man out, you know, and you start living, you know, through the spirit you're this is all you're going to think about anyway so what else are you going to talk to um, to your children about you know what i mean and who else is going to teach your children this if ain't nobody teaching your children and how can they kind of facts bro good definitely good point kind of, man because a lot of times what 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 our people do you know like they they want to sit our child down in front of uh, the tv you know, and that, and that's cool. You know, from time to time, yeah. You know I mean, but if you don't know what's being played in a lot of these these shows, like you know, shoot, just sit down for a couple of days and watch some of these shows with your kids. Yeah, you know I mean, and, and believe you me, you ain't gonna want to watch them. You ain't gonna let them watch them no more, right? Because yep. you can bring it up, bro, in uh, Deuteronomy eleven and verse uh, verse nineteen. Deuteronomy chapter eleven and verse nineteen. And ye shall teach them your children, speaking of them, when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. Right, and that's why Deuteronomy is called second law, right? Because the Lord got to repeat things because our people is real hard-headed. They're real hard-headed, right? And they're real stubborn, right? So the Lord, he got to reiterate it again and again. And again and again and again amongst our people. You know I mean, because they, they just don't seem to get it. You know what I mean? And you know I mean, and actually when you read further down, like um, you see that it says that you know it's supposed to be on our doorpost, right? Instead of us uh confiding um these uh names and block tags and gang tags and stuff all in our community, we're supposed to actually have law stations and commandments throughout our community, right, that that our children could see, you know, how special they are, right? Imagine just going to school and you, you, your school on the side of the wall got Deuteronomy 7 and 6, 
right? And only blacks, Hispanics go to that school, right? You just want to feel even more special. Like, you see that before you even go into the door, right? But you got a point, bro? Yeah, um, that's that's how you write it in your heart and in your mind, you know, by seeing it repetitiously, by hearing it repetitiously. You see it on your doorpost. You got your fringes on. You're reminding yourself every time, you know, you see wickedness going on in the world, you know, it's, it's these things are a hedge of protection because um if if you're in sin then you don't have no protection by the most high so if you keep reminding yourself with these you know with the laws on your doorposts you know with the fringes on with binding these words on your hands and on your and between your your front lips of your eyes you know it, it keeps you it keeps you 10 toes down on these commandments and and you know the most high uh, keep that hedge of protection around you as long as you're keeping these commandments and doing his will kind kind yeah and that's how the hedge of protection stays there and you know and you should want this for your child yeah you know i mean like i mean like i mean for one you gotta want it yourself because a lot of times our people we don't care if we gonna live today or tomorrow. So, yeah, I mean, like, I mean, you got to want it for yourself, but then therefore want it for your children, because, you know, if you want your children to live, you got to keep these laws, statutes, and commandments. Matter of fact, um, matter of fact, uh, uh, um, just let me get this real quick, uh, the Deuteronomy, uh, 30, 30 and, uh, 19. Then I'm going to get the, uh, the one in, uh, Proverbs, Proverbs, uh, 22 and 6. I just I just want to just get this real quick. Uh, Thirty huh. and verse nineteen. Come, you can bring it up, bro. Deuteronomy chapter thirty and verse nineteen. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing mm-hmm. and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both mm-hmm. thou and thy seed may live. Right, and that's why your children die. Because you don't want to live. You don't you don't want to learn these statutes and commandments. Us as a people, right? So by default, we don't want to teach them to our kid. So, you know, hey, I just want them to do their own thing in life. You know, I don't want to force them. I don't want, you know, I don't want to be breathing all down their back. You know, they got to find their own way in life. Because when you push them, you know, sometimes they go away from it. You know, I mean, how much better it is for your child to go to school and be seeing everybody celebrating Christmas and all these goofy uh holidays, yeah you know I mean, and they and they and they and they and they already had got gifts already, way, way before them, you know, because you can you can get them gifts whenever you want. It is like got being on pagan ho- holiday, yeah you know I mean, to uh to give them gifts. Yeah you know I mean, but now now they looking at them like that, like you know, like they're weird. Yeah, I mean, like, why, like, why do they got a tree? Like, why do they need this? Why does this make them happy? I mean, because you are already setting them apart in their mind to to believe that they're special. Yeah, I mean, so now they can see their peers and be like, "Dad, like they they a bunch of weirdos, man." Yeah, I mean, celebrating this 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 holiday for what? Don't nobody come down no chimney. You know what I mean? And Ronnie don't even got a chimney in his house, man. I was there. You know what I mean? So it's like, I mean, this this is just what our 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 you know what you can instill in your kids by just teaching them these laws, statutes, and commandments, and you'll have them live, right? Um, let me get a that one in Proverbs. That one in Proverbs twenty two. Huh. Proverbs chapter twenty two and verse six. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Right. Most high God will. Our children won't depart from the faith. Right. Once you once you're installing it, programming it into their mind. Before they can even walk. Right. Before they can really even talk. You're already programming it into their mind. You know what I'm saying? That's how it's supposed to be. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Why they're still inside their mother's belly. You up there saying Hebrew words. You know what I mean? I mean, you're programming it. So it's to the point that when they start to grow old, they they won't most high God will. 
you know, that they won't go out of slog it out of the faith. You know, they will be steadfast in it because from a child they uh they they knew it, right? Um, unless you got a point, bro. I was uh I'm gonna uh, go to First Kings. Con, I got a point. Um, I'm gonna drop down to Proverbs 22 and 15. It say foolishness is bound in the heart of a child because a child don't know no better. So of course, you know foolishness. Let me see. It says. You know, his, his heart is going to be filled with foolishness. You know, he's going to want to do what he want to do with your child. But the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. So mm. if you correcting your child and if you disciplining your child, he's not going to go, you know, to the left. He's going to stay on that right path. Kind of. Kind of. Kind of good. Great, great, great point, bro. bro because uh, actually that's big with our people. Like our people try so much to be their child friend, right? And you're their parent, right? It's cool that your child can have a good, you know, relationship with you, you know what I mean? And it's cool, you know, and, and all that. But listen, they got to have a little bit of a fear. You know what I'm saying? They got to have a little bit of a fear from you, right? The same way that we got to fear our father, which obviously is their father too, right? So that fear goes a, 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 a long way. You know what I mean? And it's not that they got to be shaking in their boots when they see you, but they got to have a at least a level of fear from you. Because if they don't have a level of fear, they're not going to respect you. Right? If you got another point, bro. Yeah, Proverbs 23 and 13. Withhold not correction from the child. You got to You got to discipline your child, man. Don't be scared. Don't be, you know, listening and doing what these other nations do. They send their child to the corner and you know, take the phone off of them like that's really supposed to do something. You know, you you really gotta let your child know. You know who's the boss in this house, who's the who's the adult, and who's the child over here. Come so on. withhold not correction from the child, for if thou beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. He's not gonna die if you whip his ass. Yeah. You know, you <laughs> give him correction. You let him know. You know, you you you're messing up, and next time you think about doing this. You're going to think about this ass whooping that you got the last time you did it. Kind of, kind of, and, and, and here, and here's a, and here's an example, you know, like on a minute level, right? Because we, like, we were, we weren't raised, uh, understanding that we was, uh, Israelites, right? Uh, my family, but you know, um, it's a nice amount of us. So like my mom would beat some of my older siblings, right? So I would see this go down. And me being one of the younger ones, I would uh, look, and I'm not saying that I did everything by the book or I was a, you know, a hundred and, and um, a, a one student child, but I would see a lot of things that they did. And I'm when I'm seeing them get their ass whooping, I'm like, dad, it worked better in my interest to do what she talking about. You <laughs> know what I'm saying? Like, it just, it makes more sense. You know what I mean? Logically, like why I'm sitting there watching them get beat. You know what I mean? In the background, I'm like, dang. That makes sense. Like, yeah, I mean, like, yeah, I mean, don't do that. When she say don't do it, don't do it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. so the brother right, actually sparing, sparing the rod, you really will spoil the child, right? And you're going to spoil the child to their own destruction. Why? Because this society is not for blacks and Hispanics. So you're going to spoil them in your house and then send them outside to a pack of wolves and damn animals. You know I mean, who not going to have that spoil mentality that you've given them, right? So you're not even setting them up right. You're setting them up for failure, right? You want to spoil them and carry them and waddle them and all this stuff. I mean, that's not what God said. So we got to stick with thus say of the Lord, right? Um, and then, matter of fact, let me get a, a, a nice example of that in uh, First Kings. First Kings uh, 2, and you're going to start at uh, 1. Uh we uh, can get in uh, with David. Okay. First Kings chapter two and verse one. Now the days of David drew nigh that he should die. And he charged Solomon, his son, saying, I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself a man. Right. And show thyself a man. Right. I'm on my deathbed. Right. And I'm and I'm about to pass you the crown. Right. Because the Lord ordained him. The, Solomon, he, he ordained that son of David to take the crown, 
right? So he says, I go all the ways of my forefathers. I'm getting ready to die. But before I leave this earth, let me give you instructions on how to be a man. Come on. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies as it is written in the law of Moses, that thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest and whithersoever thou turnest thyself. Right, and wherever thou turnest thyself, that's how you're going to make yourself a man when you actually do thus say of the Lord and you're walking in the laws, statutes, and commandments, right, of the heavenly father. That's how you'll show yourself a man, right? I mean, and Solomon, you know, he was he was young. You know, when he took when he took the throne. Right. That's why he asked for wisdom above all. Right. Matter of fact, um, you can read verse uh, verse four, bro. First Kings chapter two and verse four. And the Lord may continue his word, which he spake concerning me, saying, if thy children take heed to their way to walk before me in truth with all their heart and with all their soul, there shall not there shall not fail thee said he a man on the throne of israel right if it right if the children right will walk in the way right it will not fail thee right yeah you know i mean say if he a man on the throne of israel right which was solomon right so basically that you know the people is only going to follow what the leader is doing so if the leader going to be wicked what do you think his understudies is going to be Right. So if the understudy is going to be wicked, what do you think the masses of the people going to be? The, if the masses of the people going to be wicked, what do you think they children are going to be? And then that's how it starts to be generational after that. Right. So that's why the Lord was saying that it got to start from the head on down. Right. Solomon, you got to get it right. That way, all your people get it right. And yeah, you know I mean, and they could tinkle on down to, to the nation being right. That's what it was all about. Right. Um. Unless you got a point, bro, I'm going uh, to go to Psalms, the one in Psalms. Okay. You know what I mean, because that's because that's just that's just the whole thing. All right. Right. You know, you're 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 never too young because sometimes people that's what people say. You know, oh, well, you know, I'm too young. No, like, I mean, that's what Jeremiah was saying. Right. And the Lord said, don't say that. You know what I mean? You know what I mean, because the Lord can use anybody. At any stage of their life, what that he wants to why? Because the Lord is not relegated to time, like how we are, right? We we're relegated to time, to different seasons, snow, fall, summer, right? The Lord's not relegated to that. You know what I mean? So he he's not in the in the realm of time. So he can use you at any stage, whether or not if it's the tiny stage or or grown stage, right? Huh. Let me bring it up. Okay. Psalm chapter 127 and verse 3. Children are a gift from the Lord. Huh. They are a reward from him. Right. Children are a gift. Right. It's in spite of what the white man says, you know, oh, wait, wait, wait until you know you done live your life. Have your fun. You know. Do do you like you know what I mean like live your best life, right? The Lord said, matter of fact, read that again, bro. Children are a gift from the Lord, they are a reward from him. Right, they are a reward from him, right? To have a little you, right? You know I mean, like that's a reward. You know I mean, the Lord said he that's what he gave you. You know what I mean? So people want a trophy, right? People want to have a a watch or a car, right? The Lord said, look, that's a reward. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? So, and you know, and, and that's how, you know, brothers want to know, uh, you know, if they're, if they are really a great teacher, you know what I mean? You know, uh, 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 you know, that, that, that's how you can really know, you know, most high God will, because, you know, only the Lord knows, you know, the spirit that he even put in, even in our child. You know what I mean? When you can raise your child up from the ground up, yeah, you know I mean, like that that shows the ability really as a as a true uh, teacher. Yeah, you know I mean, that they're a gift from the Lord. Right. Because, again, the white man wants to try to 
have this notion that, you know, you know what I mean, that a child is going to bring you down, you know, the economy is messed up, you know, now I got another mouth to feed, I got this, I got that. Stop eating cheeseburgers with your fat ass. You know what I mean? Stop doing this and that. You know what I mean? Like, and so, so you know what I mean, what, what Esau says, we're not giving reverence to. We're just giving reverence to what God says out of his holy word, right? That's what we're giving reverence to. Let me get um that one in Isaiah. Because that actually parallels exactly what this one. All right. right that one, I say a 54 and a 13. Oh, I don't know if you got a point though, bro. Yeah. Um, the ch you know, your children are are you know a, a gift, man. So how are you going to take care of that gift? How are you going to sure. lead that life? What you gonna you don't do that by showing your body on Instagram and on Facebook and at OnlyFans, and then you know, you teaching your children how to be wicked. The most high, he gonna he's gonna burn the wicked in this lake of fire. So for him to give you something for you to allow to get burned up, like how do you even deserve to have that? We got to know how to treat our you know our gifts from the most high. We got to take care, take advantage of it in a good way, not take advantage and do wrong with it, but take advantage that we got that gift and then you know we got somebody that we can train. We got somebody. That we can make better than who we are. Okay. Isaiah 54 and 13. And all thy children shall be taught of the Lord. And great shall be the peace of thy children. Great. And all of thy children. All of thy children shall be taught of the Lord. And then great is they peace. Right. It's going to be great peace. Right. When they're taught. Talk of the Lord. Um, dang, I don't know if I have this one. It was one day, it slipped, slipped my mind. Dang, I forget. It was, uh, I don't even know if I uh, wrote it down. It was in the Apocrypha. Um, it was saying, it was saying like that, uh, uh, children, uh, having multiple children is like, uh, being, um, having an archer having, um, multiple, uh, arrows or bows. Dang, I should have wrote that one down. I thought I had that one, Salak here, bro. Dang. Go ahead, look for that. I got something to bring out. Oh, kind. All right, Cyrac, chapter 16, and verse 3. We're going to get this in the KJV. It says, as you know, Most High, he, he really looking for people that's going to do his will. He, he killed everybody in the world and saved only eight people in the days of Noah. So he ain't looking for non-profitable um, people that's, you know, that's not going to put in his work. That doesn't profit the Most High and it don't profit your life. So if it don't profit you, how much more your children? Your children don't get no g -pads. So, Sirach, chapter 16 and verse 3, trust not thou in their life, neither respect their multitude, for one that is just is better than a thousand. Having one child that fears the Most High and does his will is better than having a, a thousand children. And better it is to die without children than to have them that are ungodly. It's better to not have no children if you want to raise ungodly kids. And it's really because you're going to suffer. You're going to suffer to see the suffering of your children. Because that's why that's why kids is dying before the parents is dying. Kids are dying before the grandparents is dying. I, I hear I hear so many grandparents, you know, I've heard so many stories from these women, grandmothers. That cry because you know their grandchild should have never died before them, and and it's crazy when you you think about it. Like wow, you you put 70, 80 years on this earth, and and your and your grandbaby couldn't make it past fourteen years old, past sixteen years old. It's how you know that the the times is changing so rapidly. Right, right, right. And the and the Lord is and the Lord is is killing our kids. Why? Because they're not keeping these laws, statutes, and commandments. Why? Because they're not being taught these laws, statutes, and commandments 
by these elders, right? Yeah, you know I mean, these yeah. weak punk ass elders. Yeah, you know I mean, who talk about some oh, but I'm still young. Yeah, you know I mean, I'm still young. Listen, yeah, you know I mean, you had you 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 got a kid, so now you know you're not that young no more, right? Yeah, you know I mean, like you know I mean, it is what it is. Like you got you got a kid, so now you're not that young, and you can be young, but yeah, you know I mean. Now you got to change your life, right? Which you should have been trying to change your life already. But sometimes the Lord will put a child in, in, in a person's life, you know, just to help them change. You know what I mean? To give them that, you know, a sinner, so to say, right? But, um, but bro, that's, um, it, it is, it's in Psalms 127. Uh, yeah, we, we just, uh, we just uh, got to read further down. But you can start back at uh, three again. Psalms 127 and verse three. Children are a gift from the Lord. They are a reward from him. Children born to a young man are like arrows in a warrior's hand. Right. How Children. joyful. How joyful is the man whose quiver is full of them. He will not right. be put to shame when he confronts his accusers at the city gates. Right, 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 right. So the Lord said that having multiple kids. It's like it's a locker, bro. You can hear me, right? Con. All right, con, con. Yeah, you know I mean, so so the Lord said that having multiple kids is just like you being a warrior, right? Yeah, you know I mean, you just you got multiple arrows. Yeah, you know I mean, yeah, you know I mean, and, and and this is too for you sensitive Christian type bulls too. You know, the Lord be comparing everything to like war. Yeah, you know I mean, even having kids, he is comparing it to like an army. Yeah, you know I mean, like having an army. Yeah, you know I mean, like wartime. You know what I mean, so this soft, mellow, you know, hippie type Lord that you think you know, right? He doesn't exist in this Bible, not in this Bible, right? Yeah, you know I mean, not in this one. Yeah, you know I mean, maybe in some other one, uh, in the Mormon one or something. Yeah, you know I mean, but not not in this Bible, right? Uh -huh. He does not exist, right? So, um, yeah. So, so let me. Uh, oh, you read the one in uh in Timothy. The uh, four yet. twelve. Oh yeah, yeah. You can bring that one up. First Timothy. Uh, first Timothy, uh, four and uh, twelve. This is First Timothy chapter four and verse twelve. Let no man despise thy youth, but uh, be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit. And faith and purity. Okay. okay. Hold on. Let me get uh, get that uh, right there. So it said. So it said. Listen. So it said. Let no man despise thy youth. Right. So we can't despise our own youth and the youth of our of our nation. Right. Because a lot of times elders, what they say, you know, everything wrong with our community is by these young these young punks. Right, these I mean, who trained them to be that way? Yeah, you know I mean, they didn't have fathers in the home, they didn't have guidance. You know, the only person that they looked to as a father figure was like a nigga who was like four years older than them. You know what I'm saying? That was on the block. So it's like, yeah, you know I mean, like, like who who did they have? You know what I mean, and and none of y'all wanted to be, you know, uh uh, you know, to be that type of leader for them, yeah. You know I mean. You know I mean, so y'all already was counting them as being lost, like this one Muslim boy from the uh, from the job. You know I mean, and he got kids. You know what I mean, but he but he's saying like, oh, but they but this generation finished. You know what I mean, and it's and it's crazy too. But I'm just bring this part out. But he was up there selling them uh, weed. You know what I mean, so he basically was uh, up there saying that you know, yeah, you know I mean, you might as well uh, do it. Like they 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 finished, right? Islam is finished. And most of our people, especially these elders, bug the hell out, man. They, they bug the hell out. So we we can't despise our youth, right? Because then it says what? Then it says, it says not to despise the youth, but be thou an example, right? We have to be an example, right? Brothers with kids, even brothers that don't have kids, right? Yeah, you know I mean, they don't like, all right, so now I don't got no kid. So now I can just. I can just do what I want in uh in my community. No, like because younger people still see you as an older person, 
they're still going to smoke that cigarette that you're smoking. They're still going to roll that weed up. Even if you don't have kids and you're not being an example to them, You the, the other kids are still on the block. They still going to see you and they still going to follow you because you, you, you're an older person. You know what I mean? So by default, it just seems cool. You know what I mean? So you, you're still meant to be an example. Whether or not, if you have a child, have kids or not, right? You still have to be an example to the youth, right? That's what it's according to this Bible, right? I don't know if you got a point, bro. Yeah, who who going to stand up for that? Who going to stand up and be that example? Okay. You know, we got a world full of drug dealers, adulterers, murderers, you know, people putting knots of money to their ear, you know, teaching our people how to kill each other, teaching our people all type of wickedness. You know, who going to stand up and teach them the right way? I mean, we doing this for your children. Yeah, you know I mean, we doing this, you know, for the wicked, man. Those who don't know the way, man. So, so you're going to be the same parent, you know, that the child looking at getting locked up every time you come out of jail, you're going back to jail. You know, you, you got to sell your house and your car for bail money and lawyer money. So now, you know, you got you got a baby mom out here. You know, with your child now, she she got four other dudes around your kid. You know, because she get, she getting lonely and she need help. She can't be you know jumping from house to house, so she got to depend on somebody. And now she going outside of the race because us so called blacks and Hispanics, we always you know choose to to, <coughs> to disappoint our family. By by going to prison, by by doing these things to hurt our people. So now they're gonna run to the white man because the white man got his life together in their eyes. Yeah. And then your child, then your child growing up with strangers, man. So what kind of example you gonna be? Because that shit is played out, man. Right, and that's and that's his, the last example that you will want him to to be around is a damn Edomite because I'm trying to tell you like you know, you know what I mean it's hard to try to convert our people yeah you know I mean that's that's what they will consider as even so called full blooded but we know it's no you know such thing as half or thirty percent blood but you know I mean I'm saying that somebody that has an Israelite mom and Israelite dad but they were raised with a uh, Edomite uh, mom and uh, 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 Edomite uh, mom and dad. Yeah, I mean, even though they're what you would say uh, full-blooded uh, Israelite. I mean, it's hard to convert them because they've been raised by Edomites. So it's like you can't tell them. Yeah, you know I mean, yeah, you know I mean that they're wrong. Yeah, you know I mean, like they saved me. Yeah, you know I mean, they saved me from all the evil. You know what I mean, and they and they they dig down into the, the the ghetto and the slums and they lift me up, right? Sweet Jesus, right? You know what I mean, he he lift me up. So is that I mean, like that's the, almost the last person you want you want raising your kids, right? You know what I mean, it's any of these other nations, especially Esau, right? For more reasons than one. But um, I'm gonna end out with this. You know, we still got a uh, Matthew uh, last. But I'm gonna end out with the one in Second Timothy. <laughs> okay. Second Timothy. Yeah, Second Timothy three and fourteen. Second Timothy chapter three and verse fourteen. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned, and hast been assured of, knowing um knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Kind, you know what I mean, and what and who and, and where and where did we learn it from? We learned it from the holy scriptures, right? Yeah, you know I mean, to raise our child up from the ground up. Yeah, you know I mean, so so now we're sure we're sure that that this is true because it came from the mouth of these holy prophets, right? Yeah, you know I mean, it came from Moses, came from Isaiah, right? Yahweh Shah, right? Come on, verse 15. Huh. Second Timothy three and fifteen, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, 
which is in Hamashiach, Yahusha. Right, and 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 then you learn about your salvation. Why? Because you know what I mean, our child know that even if they have a, a semi okay life here, that it's only going to be a zillion times better. Yeah, you know I mean, once they get to the kingdom, you know what I mean, but they have to walk the walk, right? They have to even know that as a child, right? Because then it starts to be in frame in their mind when they're an adult, right? That they have to continuously walk this walk, know that America is not your rust, right? Even though we still have to survive and do what we have to do, live here, work these uh, jobs, you know, feed our family, we got to do what we got to do. But we know that we're going to get salvation, that yeah, most high God will, we can be a part of that number to get salvation and leave here, right? I mean, this is what we all striving for, right? But we got to know it from the ground up. And the only way to know it from the ground up is that our our, our elders, you have to, you got to teach these kids, right? You got to look at the man in the mirror, right? And know that, you know I mean, you're bringing not yourself down, but your whole household down, right? Because you don't want to serve the Lord. You don't want to stop smoking. Right. So you can't condemn your son for smoking because you're smoking. You know what I mean, and a lot of times niggas know that they know that they they know their child smoking. They know their child doing this and that, but they can't say nothing about it because that's exactly what they're doing. You know what I mean, and they don't want to stop. So by default, you know, they, they don't want to tell they, they kid to not do it. Why? Because they know they kid know that they doing. It. You know what I mean, and they kid waiting for them to tell them to not do it. You know what I mean? Because the first thing that they're going to say is, why are you doing it? Right? So we got to not be that hypocrite. We got to be that light so that they can see what light actually looks like. Right? That's how it has to be. Right? Um, if you if don't got any point, oh, come. You know, because we just destroying each other because you don't want to stop doing what you're doing because you want to reject knowledge. Hosea 4 and 6. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee. So, you know, we got real teachers out here teaching our people. It's Israelites all over the earth right now. So, you you know, it's hard for people to say they never heard this because this is spreading like wildfire. Mm -hmm. I, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, so if you forgot it, then your kids damn sure forgot it. I will also forget thy children, and that's why our kids is dying at such a high rate. That's why our kids is doing the most wicked acts of crime in these streets at so such young ages, is because this is what we're teaching our kids. We letting them watch these kind of movies. We letting them watch these rap videos. We letting them watch YouTube and. And uh, and taking them away from the most high. A lot of these kids don't even know about the Bible. You say, do you know that Jesus is a black man? And they be like, no, I never heard that before. Like you're you, you're a you're a so-called black young king, and you don't know that your savior is is the same same as you. <laughs> we teaching our people the wrong things, man. Right, right, because they built uh, given um having that low self esteem. You know what I mean, because all you know, you know I mean, like I mean, uh, our our people just telling just telling our kids that they special is good enough. No, we have to show them it with does say of the Lord. Why? Because people can say all they people can say all they want, but at the end of the day, you know, this Bible is undefeated. Yeah, you know I mean, like people can talk and say, oh, oh, this and that about the Bible. You know, men wrote it, and this, you know, that. You know I mean, all all the stuff people have said throughout time about God's word. And guess what still stands? God's word, right? So you got to show them that they're special according to thus say of the Lord. Why? Because when it's all said and done, this is still going to stand, right? Not not your opinion that they special. Yeah, you know I mean, yeah, you know I mean. Like not like not their mama opinion, you know what I mean? Like not uh Black Lives Matters opinion, like that nonsense. You know what I mean? You gotta teach them that they're special, 
right, through thus say of the Lord, right, our people, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, and that's it, right? Nobody else is getting in. Nobody else is special, right? Everybody else is everybody else is just is just uh it's just trash underneath our feet. You know what I mean? And that's what our kids need to know, right? You know what I mean? So this way, so this way that our, our kids cannot suffer from low self-esteem. Because a lot of times this is what it is. Our kids, they suffer from low self-esteem already. This is why so much hate in our community. Because we hate we just hate looking at each other. Because we hate each other. You know what I mean? Like you would think that that would help bring us together. You know what I mean? You know, because it's like I got problems, you got problems, and it's both the same similar problems. Yeah, I mean, you would think that that would bring us together, but no, you know, I mean, but it's like, I, I got problems, and damn, how, how you got your bills paid, though, you know what I mean, but you still struggling, right, so we got to deal with that self-hate, you know what I mean, and it, and we're going to deal with it with thus save the Lord, with loving our people, teaching our people these laws, statutes, and commandments, no matter if y'all like us or not, you know what I mean, we still going to go to the highways and byways. I mean, we're still going to do thus save the Lord. We're going to make these sit downs. We're going to do everything that the Lord is putting in our spirit to do. You know what I mean? We're going to do all that. Right? right. I mean, and that's and that's what it's about, you know. You know I mean, trying to raise the next generation up to be soldiers for the Lord, right? By teaching them these laws, statutes, and commandments, right? So you got that brother in uh, Matthew, Matthew 5 and uh, 19. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 19. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Right. And, and, and you know, me and my brethren, right, we try and be called great. In the kingdom of heaven, most high God will, you know, this is what we striving for, right? So we trying to do thus save the Lord in this Bible, right? Now we know that we that that we didn't perfect it, you know, but we're striving to do so. You know what I mean? We're not going around saying, Well, you know, he knows my heart. So, you know, that there you go. I, I don't need to do that, but he, he knows though, you know what I mean. No, we we trying to say, listen, Lord, do you see our actions? Do you see do do you see us striving the best the best that we can do? Do you see that? Do you see our actions, Lord? That's that's what we hope in the heavenly Father can see, right? And that our labor will not be in vain, right? Okay. But you got any more points? This was beautiful. Kind kind, and, and we gotta teach our kids, teach our kids diligently, sharply. Right, how the brother went into the word with diligence is we gotta teach them sharply, right, what the word of the Lord says, right? Because we cannot depend on school, on TV, damn sure not these Christian pastors to teach our children anything, right? The Lord set us up to do it. So what we gotta do is we gotta be men and actually do what the Lord wants us to do. Right. Huh. And with that, and with huh. that I'll 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 slot that. That's your kids, man. Save your kids, man. Ain't nobody else going to save your kids for you. Kind. 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 And with that, I want to give all glory out and praise to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shah. And with that, I want to say Mawaf Laba Ball. Mawaf Laba Ball. In the streets, yeah, I was lost. Trying to be like all the hustlers. They don't tell you it's a cause. You get a casket or a cell. It's because you want the flaw. So call law to your howl. Cause I answer when you call. I came up from the blocks. Banging flaming glocks. My name is rang a lot. The